Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pejman Najafi from Hassel Plattner Institute, University of Potsdam, Germany. Today I'll be presenting our paper titled as CMR, Bringing Advanced Analytics to Legacy Security Information and Event Management. With no further ado, let's get started with the presentation. Um, let's start with a bit of introduction to CM systems. So CM stands for Security Information and Event Management. Um, these are the systems within the typical organizations or enterprises that are expected to hold all relevant security related data. Uh, the data sent to such systems can vary from um, basic alerts from intrusion detection systems, antiviruses, to wide range of event logs from um, servers such as proxy servers, firewalls, DNS, to endpoints and workstations such as Windows event logs. It could also include some uh, OSINT aspect and um, other type of open source intelligence, such as uh, threat intelligence vulnerabilities and so on. Um, such systems are expected to have a holistic view of all IT related uh, landscape within the enterprise. So traditionally, um, the original purpose of these systems were to meet regulatory and compliance requirements, such as PCI and HIPAA. Um, over time, they have evolved to support other um, purposes, particularly due to one main reason. Um, as we said, these systems are expected to be the central repository of all security relevant data that includes event logs, all data collected from the landscape, from every device from the landscape. Therefore, a holistic view over these heterogeneous data sources. Um, and we could hypothesize that if there exists a threat that somehow managed to bypass the traditional defense parameters, we expect to find its traces somewhere in these logs. And that could be our last safety net, right, in catching any unknown, unknown threats. Therefore, over time, more purposes were added to the CEM systems, uh, from the regulatory and compliances and information event management to other uh, requirements such as threat hunting, investigation, event correlation, enrichment, uh, rule-based pattern matching, and signature-based threat detection. The last one is an important one as we're going to get back to it, which is the problem. So um, there are a lot of CM systems right now, and it's perhaps one of the most important uh, system and tool used within mature organizations uh, today. However, there are problems with them, um, particularly there are architectural limitations. Um, they, lack distribution, uh, they lack the capability to be a distributed and scalable system, um, respecting everything that we learned from big data architectures and uh, distributed systems. They are not usually extensible, they cannot support new state-of-the-art uh, tools, technologies and ideas. Uh, they are not so open, they have their closed data sources, the, the, the data formats, and they lack integration with um, some other important tools as we will find out soon. Therefore, uh, the architectural limitation leads to lacking advanced analytical capabilities, which is quite important. Um, looking at signatures and just rules is not the same as advanced analytics. Um, there is a need and uh, an incapability of doing complex data engineering and complex uh, state-of-the-art data science, such as statistical machine learning, or data mining um, approaches to the problem of uh, threat detection. Um, to just give you a bit of more, um, to give, give you a bit more ideas of uh, what do we mean here, you can think of uh, back in the day OLTP and OLAP systems. Um, there are different systems or different ideas for different purposes. Uh, the same as MySQL and Apache Edge Base. There are different technologies designed for a different purpose. Um, same as Elastic and Apache Spark. For those of you who know these technologies, you, you get where I'm going with this. Um, these are technologies designed for a different purpose uh, and for different reasons. Um, therefore, searching can, is not the same as analytic, analytics. And that's basically the core problem that we are trying to highlight within today's um, CMs, calling them legacy CMs, and what could be perhaps an extension of them and why is it important to get them. Um, that is actually the main reason why in this paper we are proposing um, the idea of CMR, which is adding analytical capabilities to traditional CMs. Um, what it is beyond the scope of this presentation to get into this to the detail of um, our reference architectures proposed in this paper, um, due to the lack of time, 
uh, I would like to just bring your attention to the building blocks uh, in this figure, where we try to present the abstract view of the main component that we understand is important for a CM that would now have analytical capabilities. You should be able to um, add technologies to this um, abstract reference architectures in order to support your needs. We will see in a bit, uh, few more slides what do we mean by that. But before getting there, I would like to bring attention to storage and the processing uh, modules of such um, uh, reference architectures. Um, every module here is expected to be uh, modular, literally, and uh, scalable. Uh, and consists of, of perhaps multiple layers. So uh, when there is a big block of uh, storage here, it actually doesn't mean like a single storage, where well, you can think of it as an abstraction for storages within the system. Uh, storages where it could be an index store, it could be um, a hot storage for queuing mechanism, it could be object store, it could be NoSQL um, databases. Um, you can think of different needs, uh, but all needs to be able to communicate nicely to together throughout this architecture. Um, for more information about uh, each of these modules and what we uh, consider their purpose and their importance, please refer to the paper. Um, we were lucky enough that during our um, time to develop two um, systems based on this reference architecture. One, we call it an in-house research work workbench as we created it within the Institute ourselves. Um, putting technologies, open source technologies, and fitting it towards that uh, reference architecture that I just talked about. And we were lucky enough to also get a chance to work with a, with a large international organization to bring some analytical capabilities close to their CM um, by adding, by utilizing technologies surrounding their landscape. Um, so within our open source uh, research workbench, we uh, used uh, technology such as Apache Spark for the main processing. We use different storage systems such as Cassandra, uh, HDFS, Kafka, and of course Elastic for the uh, string search. Uh, we also used uh, other tools such as Nephi, Logstash to be able to get hold of um, the ingestion and basic pre-processing, and with some, of course, visualizations such as Kibana, Zeppelin, and Nephi itself for the orchestration. Um, there were more some other also um, uh, like privately built um, tools as well, and we represented with this custom uh, icon. Uh, and within the real world enterprise, we uh, got hold of the Databricks, Azure ADLS, Data Factory, and Logic Apps for the main aspects of this um, proposed architecture. So having the capabilities uh, now provided by, by the architecture that enables uh, analytical capabilities, uh, as it would respect everything we learned in big data architectures, um, now we can enable new purposes and new possibilities. Uh, we can perhaps get to the idea of data-driven SOC. Um, we can look into everything that you learned over the last few years in um, data science in the research of like data mining, graph theories, machine learning, um, deep learning, artificial intelligence, every um, science that has been put into use in different domains, we can learn from them and apply it to cybersecurity and perhaps look for, truly look for user behavior analysis, something that is not so easy as you have to define signatures. You need to be able to do large scale analysis. Um, we can look into vulnerable users, insider threats, data exfiltration, we can look into anomaly detection, truly anomaly detection within such systems. We, we can try to find uh, malicious entities. We can try to ingest, correlate, and um, uh, build automated pipeline that build this um, different use cases on top of each other, therefore complex data engineering, and perhaps get to a point where we can actually look for unknown unknowns. So in our work, uh, we attempted to highlight the importance of advanced analytics and the need for um, extending traditional CMs with the architectural capabilities to support uh, big data analytics with a simple yet difficult use case, particularly beaconing detection. So beaconing is basically the periodic attempts of the malware trying to reach its uh, command and control for receiving instructions from the adversary. Uh, it is important as it could be very much uh, characteristics of any type of advanced um, um, malware. 
Um, one could look into our beacon detection in using data sources such as NetFlow, DNS, Proxy, PCAP, basically any data source that might have some sort of network um, traces uh, in them, even EDR, because some of the EDR would also um, record the network connections. Um, and possibly you can create a loo, rule that look for periodic connection attempts among same source and destination per. Um, however, it's not an easy challenge. It's not a simple rule that you can define in a CM system as a signature or as a search because uh, it is a big data problem. You need to look into every source and destination per um, and calculate the time of the connection and differences of those times um, to be able to, to see how periodic it is. There's also the pro other problems such as, um, you know, that the beginning might have some randomness or jitter to it. There are also the concept of false positives. There are a lot of benign applications that um, have beaconing behavior, such as updates um, or tools that need to reach out to the service for a certain time. And there's also some other external factors. For instance, the endpoint going offline as it's the night they close the laptop or the network connection not happening. Therefore, a new network connection needs to be made um, and other external factors that could introduce more challenge. So not an easy task for a traditional CM. One has to think about this use case in order to build it. So if you try to get um, some sort of um, detection approach to this problem, um, we could highlight a very simple um, idea to, to approach this problem. Um, so consider that these are data. We've got source, um, destination, the second column, and third, the time of the connection, source, destination, timestamp. So we could try to um, prepare the data in the format. So make sure these are timestamp, that's the destination correct, the source is correct. Um, we can sort them basically also when we prepare them based on source, destination, and the timestamp. Then we can calculate the time deltas. So you see that there's uh, 60 seconds difference of connections between each of them. Um, so one minute. We need to clean this time deltas because you can see this, the first one is no because there was nothing behind. And there's this, um, this ones that basically try to simulate, let's say that the laptop was off or the network connection didn't happen, therefore immediately there was another connection. Um, we can attempt to clean those using some sort of IQR or basically percentile analysis. Mm, so getting rid of nth percentile on top or the lower bounds. Um, and get the middle part. So looking at the percentile analysis. Um, so we end up with such a table that you can see on the right. So we see the source, destination, timestamp, converted the unique timestamp and the time delta. Um, we can use the very, very simple idea of calculating the periodicity uh, by average and standard deviation. So the lower the standard deviation, which implies um, perfect periodicity. So meaning that every 60 seconds, this source is connecting to this destination. And we can see that is 10 beacons, perfect. Um, we can calculate some sort of reputation of every destination, uh, which means that, for instance, beaconing um, x.com uh, is observed only accessed by one source. So therefore, let's give it one. Um, Given this information, we can derive some sort of scoring mechanism. So one can go crazy here or just do some very, very simple ideas to be able to rate how good every weakening case is. Uh, we can look at some uh, very basic stuff like such as how good the periodicity is, what's the destination reputation, so the lower the better, um, and what about the beginning consistency. So all these formulas here will um, refer to the paper for the details. Uh, but all they would ensure is that how good it is between zero to one, uh, one being the highest uh, beaconing risk and zero the lowest. And we get some sort of um, average of, weighted average of them and alert um, on top of uh, the, the, the highest scored beaconing cases. So with a very, very simple uh, approach, uh, you get the logic here. So we use the logic described in the previous slide to set up an experiment uh, within our partner's environment. Particularly, we used one day of EDR logs, which would count towards 172 million events spanning on uh, over 102 gigabytes of data on disk. Um, we used the traditional CM systems um, and compare it to our extension 
uh, of CMI implementation next to CM. Um, due to the NDA requirements, we cannot reveal their, the setup of their CM system, uh, nor the vendor used. However, we can acknowledge that perhaps uh, this was one of the largest CM deployments in the world, um, as this organization is a, uh, is a large international organization with more than 90,000 employees. Um, and the, the CM system is uh, one of the highest rated CM vendors, according to Gartner CM report. Um, we, we compared that to our CM extension, which was mostly on Databricks uh, connection to ADLS. Um, the Databricks counting with five standard workers um, coming up to 640 gigabits of memory, 160 cores and one terabyte. Um, what well, it is important to ensure uh, th that uh, what well, it is actually important that there are so many variables in play to make this comparison fair, such as the configuration of the systems, the underlying servers, their speed, um, the actual setup. So a lot of variables in hand. We hope that even though that there are so many unknowns here in this experiment, we still be able to highlight the importance of building advanced uh, analytics. Uh, within the root, within the core of the CM, and why traditional CMs would kind of fail as they lack these capabilities, as they are not designed for distributed analytics. So um, we um, used the same logic uh, described in the previous slide uh, for the beacon detection we implemented uh, on their legacy CM and we implemented on our extension, hence Databricks. Um, so one running on Spark, one on running on uh, the, the legacy CM. Um, it took 45 minutes on the legacy CM to go over 89 million events before it's reaching its disk limits, um, hence for um, failing, uh, whereas it took uh, 26 seconds to go through all events. As I said, while it is true that the comparison may not be exactly fair, but you get the idea that we are going from one hour to down to the seconds, particularly on a CM that is designed to support an, an international enterprise in more than 90,000 employees uh, and support the whole SOC um, cyber defense uh, department of that organization. So it is not a small uh, CM deployment. Uh, it is perhaps one of the largest, and yet it was incapable, incapable of running um, this simple beaconing detection. Um, you can imagine what happens as we grow towards more advanced use cases, such as machine learning, data mining, graph mining, uh, other um, difficult ideas. Um, we also try to um, explore the scalability. So one thing with the CMO that we discuss in this paper is how important it is to be scalable, respect distributed systems, respect the uh, idea of map reduce style thinking. So uh, within our extension, um, we could see that as we increase the number of the workers, we can reduce the runtime. We also explored what happens if we run it over five days of data. While the traditional CMO didn't work, it only took 126 seconds within our extension. High, uh, proving that um, there is a need for such systems. To conclude this presentation, I wanted to highlight that traditional CMs are still very much needed. Uh, in fact, we need them for investigation, we need them for threat hunting, we need them for monitoring, something that they were originally designed for, the technologies within them designed for that purpose. However, at the same time with this work, we wanted to highlight that they lack some capabilities, particularly advanced analytical capabilities, something offered only by respecting big data architectures, distributed processing, distributed systems, distributed storage systems. And at the same time, the fact that rule-based threat hunting is no longer enough. We live in an era that we need data-driven approach to this problem, just like any other domain which have evolved using data science to solve their problems. It is sad that cybersecurity has failed to evolve. Perhaps this could be our only way to find unknown unknowns, and this is not supported by majority of today's CMs. We hope this can uh, motivate people to design and look for next generation CMs, uh, putting either new technologies from scratch together or putting other technologies next to each other, therefore supporting uh, and closing the gap between a traditional SOC analyst and today's data scientists. 
Thank you very much.